This lecture looks at cost of production in the long run. So just to review here, um, in the long run, more adjustments can be made. So in the short run, there's at least one cost that's fixed. But in the long run, you can plan for changes to your production um, facilities and your plans, and you can, can change everything if you plan for it. So in the short run, there are some fixed costs. And average total cost is predictable at every output level um, because you have a set um, of data that you're working with. But in the long run, since everything's variable, average total cost can vary at every output level. So today what we're going to take a look at is um, that in the long run, um, your average total cost at any given output level is going to vary depending on you know what your what short run decisions that you are making for your company. So the long run average total cost curve is going to include the best case scenarios or the, the lowest possible short run average total cost um, at any given output level. So I'll explain that a little bit more when I show some graphs here in a minute. Alright, so for example here, if a company was operating in the short run with one factory open, one factory producing, um, then this would be their short run average cost curve. This is their short run average total cost curve. If the company expanded and added a second factory, then this would be another possible short run average total cost scenario for them. If they added a third factory, then this, this black curve would represent um, short run average total cost with three factories. With four factories, um, we have short run average total cost four here. And with five factories, um, here we have short run average total cost five. So these are all short run possibilities and only one of these short run average total cost curves would apply at any given time depending on how many factories the firm is choosing to operate. Changes in plant size are long run changes. So in the long run a firm could be virtually any plant size. It could, it could virtually be running you know, any amount of factories that it wanted to, provided it could finance them. So they could be at one, two, three, four, or five. And if we were to take a look at those five short run possibilities and derive the long run average total cost curve, um, the long run cost curve is going to show the lowest possible short run average cost corresponding to each output level. So you're going to look at each output level and determine the best case scenario, what would be best for that company, or what could offer them the lowest possible average total cost, whether it's one factory, two factories, three, four, or five, and that point would then be um, the point that would be used for the long run average total cost curve. All right, here's another example, just to, to use some numbers. Um, so here's one possible short run average total cost curve, and we're looking here at chicken production output in terms of pounds of chicken and you can see that with this short run average total cost curve in this um, short run scenario if this company wanted to produce 40 pounds of chicken it would cost 40 cents per pound of chicken produced um, and here's another possible short run scenario the solid black curve there um, if this company wanted to expand its production to a hundred pounds of chicken you can see that if they were still operating in terms of the first short run average total cost curve it would cost forty cents per pound of chicken but if they were to um, make some adjustments and shift over to that solid black line um, and that was their new short run average total cost curve then average cost per pound of chicken would drop down to 35 cents. So if this company was planning on producing 100 pounds of chicken, they would want to make the long run changes to be able to shift to decrease their cost of production to 35 cents per pound of chicken. And then the solid red line represents the long run average total cost curve. So depending on desired output, a firm will choose the short run average cost with the lowest cost per unit output. Um, and if they know their, all their possible short run average cost curves, 
they can determine what would be best for their company in the long run, make the changes over time as they're able to get out of their fixed cost commitments and, and change things to shift to, you know, to the best possible scenario for them to decrease their average cost of production. All right, now thinking about long-run changes and businesses that um, sometimes are, are large businesses, um, let's take a look at this picture. Mark and Sally's parcel service, next day delivery, anywhere in the state, no job too small. I think it's pretty obvious what's wrong with this picture. Um, no one's heard of Mark and Sally's parcel service, and so I'm guessing that there is such a thing as a job that's too small. Uh, this is probably a false promise. They are not a large um, company that has thousands of trucks that can go anywhere and with all these different warehouses and um, and you know they there's no way <laughs> that they're going to be able to get things from one place to another opposite corner of the state overnight um, especially if if you know the the payoff for them is too small so um, there are some advantages that arise from becoming a big business like UPS or FedEx or the United States Postal Service um, and those bigger companies would be able to promise things like this that they can deliver next day um, it'll cost you more but they would be able to to do that whereas Mark and Sally's parcel service probably not gonna happen in the long run um, as some companies are able to grow and become large say um, increasing from a Mark and Sally's parcel service to a FedEx or UPS for example um, they are able to sometimes benefit from some cost savings just because they're such a big company um, sometimes when you run a big company it's not as efficient but oftentimes you are able to benefit from com some cost savings that arise from size some of those cost savings that you can benefit from include um, additional factories that you can add so you can afford to add on and build new factories and increase your output level and continue to allow your company to grow. Um, you're able to afford the best technology, which increases efficiency of production. You can purchase your resources in bulk. Um, this is what I like to call the Sam's Club or the Costco effect. Um, if any of you guys shop at a Sam's Club or a Costco, you know, you can go home with toilet paper cheaper per roll than you can buy toilet paper at Target or Cub or anywhere you know any of the smaller stores but you're gonna go home with you know a hundred rolls of toilet paper at a time so you better have a place to store them so you can get materials cheaper but you have to have um, storage capabilities and the capital up front to be able to purchase those resources in bulk and then this is the number one reason that the rich become richer in America and why companies, the big companies that are successful become richer and bigger and that's because they can reinvest their economic profit. So the profit that they make above and beyond their implicit costs um, is able to be reinvested in their company or in the stock market or whatever and their money makes money for them um, and they don't have to work work for it. So the profits that these companies, these large companies are making isn't just the profits from their sales, it's the profits from their investments that they're able to make. Alright, so we have three possible scenarios for companies in the long run, in long run um, production, when we're referring to cost here. And the first is called economies of scale, or increasing returns to scale. They both mean the same thing. Um, with economies of scale, mass production drives down your average total costs. And your output rises faster than the common rate of growth of all the inputs. So this is a situation where you're putting in a little bit and you're getting a lot back in return. A lot more than you put in. And this is evidenced by the declining portion of long run average cost. So average total costs are decreasing if you're operating in this portion of your long run average cost curve. And using numbers and looking at um, output scenarios, if your percentage change in inputs to production is less than your percentage change in outputs, then you are experiencing increasing returns to scale or economies of scale. So um, this would be like if you doubled your labor force, but you tripled your output, then you're experiencing increasing returns to scale. 
and you can see why that would drive your long run average total cost down. So this is what the curve would look like. This is the, the first portion of the long run average total cost curve. All right, second, uh, oh, nope, just kidding. Benefits of economies of scale, I got ahead of myself. Um, obviously, this is a good thing if you can be operating in this portion of your curve. Um, you can benefit from labor specialization, um, increase in efficiency, labor capital management, etc. Um, you know, you can you can uh, make sure that you have the most efficient production occurring, and obviously, you're going to have lower costs because your long run average total costs are are decreasing. All right, here we go. Second possible scenario in the long run is if you are operating in what we call constant returns to scale. This is where output rises at an equal rate as the inputs and long run average total cost stays constant for a certain period of, of time. So you know you're experiencing constant returns to scale if your percentage change in input is exactly equal to your percentage change in output. So say you double your labor force and you double your output. Uh, um, or something like that. And that's just going to be the the base of the long run average total cost curve where it stays constant for a, a short period of time. And the last place where you could end up in the long run is what we call decreasing returns to scale or diseconomies of scale. And oops, I don't know why this comes in in this order here, but inefficiencies that become endemic in large firms um, occur. We have inefficient bureaucracy, increasing cost per unit of output. Um, sometimes large firms just become less efficient over time. Um, obviously this isn't a good, a good situation to be in. And the output rises more slowly than the common rate of growth of all the inputs. And this is going to be in the, the rising portion of your long run average total cost curve, the increasing portion of the long run average total cost curve. So, percentage change in input is greater than percentage change in output. So this would be like doubling your labor force and increasing your output by 5% or something like that, or 50%. Um, so you're, you're, not, you're not getting as much bang for your buck. You're putting in more than you're getting out. And this is going to be, like we said, the increasing or inclining portion of the long run average total cost curve. So when we put um, all three of these scenarios side by side, you can see, if I trace the long run average total cost curve here, first we have economies of scale, then constant returns to scale, and then diseconomies of scale. And there are undoubtedly more than three short run possibilities that are going to make up this long run average total cost curve. So you can assume that uh, there are several more you know, short run average total cost curves filling in the gaps here um, in between the small factory, medium factory, and large factory for this company. Um, another thing I should mention is that just because a company is in, is um, producing over here in their diseconomies of scale or decreasing returns to scale um, portion, that doesn't mean they're not making profits. Some companies are, are huge and they're not as efficient as they could be, but they're still making profits so they'll continue to operate over here in the long run um, and be just fine. So companies can be operating at any portion here. Alright, so there is um, a practice problem in your packet that goes over um, the production of corn beans. So let's go through um, a little bit of that together just to make sure you understand how this works. So the two possible inputs in this scenario are the number of workers and the acres of land and um, then in the table you can see how many corn beans can be produced based on those two um, variables, those two combinations. So for question number one here, if we are producing, or I'm sorry, we're using 100 acres of land and one worker and we decide to increase our inputs to 200 acres of land and two workers, so in other words we're doubling our inputs, um, what is the effect on output? Well let's take a look here. With 100 acres of land and one worker, we are going to get one bushel of corn beans as a result and with two acres of land and two workers we're going to get six bushels of corn beans so you can see that when we doubled our inputs our output more than doubled which would lead us to believe that we are operating in increasing returns to scale or economies of scale um, the other problems you guys can go through on your own just work in the same way but just um, know that in the long run cost savings can arise from size 
Um, companies can be operating in either the increasing constant or decreasing returns to scale portions of their curves and still making money, and everything is variable in the long run.